So now that you've completed the illustration techniques in nine different ways, right, to learn different ways that you can illustrate things in Illustrator, the next part is to complete a vector illustration of your own original composition. So we've done it the nine ways. You've got your 2D, you've got your gradient, you've got your stroke only, you've got your mesh, you've got geometric, image trace, patterns, text, and then the silhouette. So many different fun ways to illustrate things in Illustrator. Um, if you've missed any part of that, there is the video in Nick's tube that you can go and find. It's titled Vector Illustration. I might change the title of that because it should say Vector Illustration Nine Ways, right? Explore those different ways to do it. So next it's time to decide what type of illustration you'd like to make. So here's some ideas, right? Think about your favorite story as a child. Think about a character you like. Think about a single object or a subject that you might want to draw. Think about a topic you're interested in or do a Google, Google, do a Google search for vector illustration. See what you see. There's tons of great things out there. Here's some different examples of some vector illustrations. You might be want to make something that looks more from the advertising realm or maybe you want to make something that's more game arty or graphic novel -y or a book cover or an illustration from a children's book. The possibilities are kind of endless here. And a quick Google search gives me a ton of different vector illustrations, flat items, colorful objects, big shapes, things like that, right? There's not a whole lot of, of, of shading in a very, uh, well, I guess there is shading in a gradient way, but uh, vectors have this like clean, sharp look to them. And that's kind of what we want to recreate here. So here's an example workflow. I found this image on the internet. I thought, oh, that looks, I, really, I love it. I love how there's the shadows in there. I'd like to try to recreate that. And my kids right now are obsessed with the book, um, It's Not a Box, right? Where this kind of rabbit, he has this box and everyone says, why are you doing this to the box? Why are you doing that to the box? And he says, it's not a box, right? It's not a box. So in one of the pages, he does the spaceship. So I found this photo. It's a royalty-free photo from the NASA website. Um, of one of the Apollo ships um, kind of during its launch. And then I went into Photoshop and I did this montage here. So let me jump over to Photoshop now. I went into Photoshop and I started adding some things together, right? I found a box. I put the box in there. I erased from parts of the box so that um, the... Zoom in a little bit. I erased from parts of the box. You could see the, the I don't even know, blasters. I don't know what that would be called. The, the rocket launcher shooter... I don't, you know, the thing that makes it go. How about that? Um, I put that in there and then I kind of went in and I separated some layers here. So I, I, I separated the smoke cloud because I wanted to get some more color into there. I wanted to bring more color into it before I went into Illustrator. I even created a layer here where I just put like a random circle. Um, and the reason why I put the circle there is because I want to play with the idea of, let me um, command click on this little thumbnail to, thumbnail to load up the selection. And then I want to go to select inverse, which is opposite, go into my background image. So it's essentially it's everything outside of the circle right now is what I have selected. And I wanted to play around with what happens if I turn that black and white, right? What if I kind of, um, I don't even know, like kind of like honed in my color. So that's something I'm playing around with, an idea that I'm playing around with. So I, I put that, that layer in there as well. Now the other thing that I did here is I opened up my library. So the libraries are here and I could bring things back and forth from Photoshop to Illustrator by going into the libraries. And you can see I pulled the full pick, I pulled the box, which I didn't name the layer, whoever does, and then I pulled my smoke cloud all into, into the, the libraries here. So now I'm gonna jump over to Illustrator. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into, let me go into those libraries, right? There's that full pick. This is the one that I wanna, I wanna modify or change and I'm gonna pull that and drop it and place it right there into my, my new document here. So I'm going to be drawing and tracing on this image. So I'm going to go into my layers and I want to lock that layer because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want that to move. Wait, you know what? It's not actually fitting. All right. Let me shrink that down so it fits in the document because I, I do want as much of it as possible. Okay. There we go. That's better. So now it fits there in the document. Um, and I'm going to lock that layer. I'm going to go back to the libraries. Let me bring out my, my smoke cloud here. What I should have done, what I should have done is create a new layer there for it, right? So a new layer for it um, because it, it didn't want to go into the lock layer. So actually, let me get rid of that. Let me create a new layer for that. Command V, put that in there. Okay. So because I changed the size of my background just a little bit, right? My clouds are a little bit off. But you know, at the end of the day, it's my illustration, so I can do with it what I want. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take out my box. And I could place the box in there as well. 
Now, one of the reasons why you'd go to use the libraries, okay, let, let's, let's example why I'd go to use the libraries here. Let me flip back to Photoshop here, and let's say that I went in, let me dock this over there. Let's say I went in and I said, okay, you know what? Let me double click on the library there. I want this image, the entire image to be in black and white. So image adjustments, let me turn it black and white. And you should probably do this in adjustment layers. I'm just doing this quickly for demonstration sake. And I can kind of pop in here and say, I want this to be even darker, kind of highlight the, the rocket there. I'm going to hit okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go file and I'm going to save it. And what you're going to do is you're going to notice a change here in the library. And when I go into Illustrator, like magic, it is also changed in Illustrator here. So that is a very cool reason to use the libraries because you might go in and, and see something that you want to be or have be a certain way, and then you can go in there and you can change it. Let me flip over. I already, I already, I've been working on this image, right? I've been working on this um, illustration. Let me turn it back on. So this is my um, kind of similar to the one I, you know, similar to one right here. I just want to show you how I put it together. But in this one, I've already started drawing. So this is my original photo, right? See how it's, it's big. My original photo is in there. I put in my clouds, right? But I actually, what I did, if you notice here, is I created a second layer. I actually took my cloud layer. Let me go back to this other one. I took my cloud layer and I image traced it. So let me go to my properties and I'm going to image trace this. But I want to, um, I want some colors in there. So I'm going to go, let's go 16 colors. Let's see what I get. I want it to break down into those vectors, into those shapes. I kind of want it to look like cut outy and chunky a little bit, right? Let's see what this looks like when it's all done. Uh, not bad, right? It's kind of, it's not bad there. I'm going to hit expand. I could also go in there and play with it. And then I'm going to take and delete this white. I want to get rid of the white there. So you could see like it's bringing up a bunch of different colors that are in here, but it's definitely got this kind of like, I don't know, there's some areas of it that I'd like to go and clean up. But for the most part, that was kind of maybe the effect that I was looking for. Let me go back into my image here. But what I did here is I added this white shape. I kind of went through and I traced out this white shape just so that it gave this an edge because otherwise it didn't actually have a full edge to it. And I wanted it to have this kind of like hard edge to it. So that, that's an image trace. That's one of those vector components, right? So what I want you to do here as you're working on this project is to think smarter, not harder. Work smarter, not harder, right? So, I mean, obviously I picked something very simple, but I... I pick something simple and that this is what I ended up drawing. But if I turn on the rocket, you're going to see that I grouped this together. Um, I just went in and I kind of selected the different components or areas and I added gradients to it. I did group it all together. So that's why it's all in one piece, but I can go in there and kind of pop it back. So there's my gradient. That's a, I, I did a gradient there. The last layer I have here is the sky. Now I, I'd have to go in and do the, the rocket parts that are kind of coming out here, but the sky I did what's called a free form gradient. And I want to show you this because this is kind of cool. So if I created a shape, I created a shape here. Let's let's make this my freeform gradient. And let's say I, I threw this guy away. I'm going to throw that guy away. And I want this to have that freeform gradient on it. So I'm going to click my gradient tool. I'm going to go up to my properties panel. And I'm going to come down into here and I'm going to click on this freeform gradient. And it, it just like assigned colors almost based on the last thing that I had. So if I go in here and I say double click, and I want to have over here to be that green color. And double click. Over here, I want to have oh, dropper, this darker blue color. Creating tool. Oops, 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 I've been picking up other colors there. Sometimes you gotta like let it go a little bit. Let it go, let it go. Okay, so double click here. Ooh, getting some really good colors out of that. Um, and if you saw, I just had like a line here, right? So watch this. Let's say I want it to be white. And then I want to. Sign light. Oops, it's not going to let me go there because it's already out there. I can assign light in some other areas. In that way, I've got a very cool freeform gradient that I could slip behind there. All right, so there's already like three of the illustration techniques that we've been kind of talking about. Now, if I want to add some texture, maybe some you know, stars, I can go and find those. I can go, I want to add these rocket components, but that's kind of one way that you could go in and start to build your own original composition based on a variety or a series of images that you montage together in Photoshop that you then bring into Illustrator to illustrate. Okay. Thanks for watching and good luck with your illustration.